All right, everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna deal with the last of the Federalist Papers, Federalist number 78, so let's get right to it. All right, so Federalist number 70 is all about the judicial branch. In fact, let's talk about the main idea right off the bat. Alexander Hamilton is arguing in favor of life terms for federal judges to maintain an independent judiciary. There's basically three main ideas in this video. Judges should have life terms, we need an independent judiciary, and that judiciary needs to have the power of judicial review. So let's go through the document and see how Hamilton makes the arguments in favor of each of these three principles of the judiciary. So right off the bat, this is the first line of Federalist 78, and he says that all judges who may be appointed are to hold their offices during good behavior. Now I know he could be a little bit more specific and that would help us out a little bit, but what he means is that there aren't term limits. They don't hold office for two years or four years or six years like senators, representatives, and the president, but rather as long as they have good behavior. So essentially as long as they aren't impeached and removed from office. Well, why does he think that's a good thing? He says that that life tenure is the best expedient to having a steady, upright, and impartial, and that's the key word, impartial administration of the laws. Now again, we kind of need to pause here because Hamilton is arguing to give somebody power for life. They will not be elected by the people, they're gonna be appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate, and then they have that job for life as long as they don't mess up and get impeached and removed from office. That's a lot of power to give somebody and that doesn't sound very democratic. So the question is, why don't we need to worry about giving them this job for life? Well, Hamilton has an answer and it's really simple. He says the judicial branch is the least dangerous of the branches. So don't worry about it. Again, you see the claim that the judiciary will always be the least dangerous to the political rights of the Constitution. It'll have the least ability to take them away, to annoy them, to limit them. Again, he goes on to say that the judiciary is beyond comparison the weakest of the three branches. When he compares the judiciary to the legislative and executive branches, he points out that the judiciary, it doesn't have power of the purse, budget power, it doesn't have power of the sword, meaning the power to make war. He then goes on to say it has neither force nor will, but merely judgment. And notice the way he says that, but merely, as if it's not that significant, but merely judgment. And the judicial branch must ultimately depend upon the executive for the efficacy of its judgments. Here Hamilton is pointing out something really important that we're gonna discuss more throughout the course, which is that the judicial branch, it can't enforce its own rulings. It can make a judgment, but then it's reliant on the executive branch or state and local governments to actually administer its rulings. So in that way, Hamilton is right. It is relatively powerless when it comes to enforcing its rulings. All right, so he's established that he wants life tenure for judges. He's established why you don't need to be worried about them having life tenure, but why is life tenure necessary? Well, here Hamilton argues that life tenure is necessary to maintain an independent judiciary. So what does that mean and why is it important? Well, he starts by saying that liberty would have everything to fear from the union of the judicial branch with either of the other two branches. So essentially, if either Congress or the president were to dominate the judicial branch, we wouldn't really have liberty. So let's kind of back up here and think about it this way. If federal judges knew that the president or Congress could take away their job if they disliked the rulings that the judicial branch made, well, what would judges naturally do? They might be inclined to rule in favor of Congress or to rule in favor of the president even when they're doing something wrong, even when they're going against the Constitution. And if that's the case, then we might as well not even have a judiciary. So he goes on to say that nothing can contribute so much to its firmness of the judicial branch and independence as permanency in office. So by allowing federal judges to have this job for life, it means they don't need to worry about Congress, they don't need to worry about the president. The president can tweet at them all day long, Congress can criticize them, but they don't have anything to fear, which means that they can do their job and rule properly and defend the Constitution. And part of defending the Constitution means that the judiciary must have the power of judicial review. They must be able to strike down laws and actions that go contrary to the Constitution. Here Hamilton says that these courts whose duty it must be to declare all acts contrary to the manifest tenor of the Constitution void. All the reservations of particular rights or privileges would amount to nothing. 
What he means by that is that without a judiciary that can actually strike down overreaches by Congress or the president, all those nice words in the Constitution, limiting Congress's power, limiting the president's power, and protecting individual rights, all those words would be just words. They wouldn't actually mean anything. They wouldn't limit governmental power, and they certainly wouldn't protect individual rights. So here, Hamilton is explicitly arguing in favor of the power of judicial review for the Supreme Court. Now, we know that judicial review wasn't mentioned directly in the Constitution, but here Hamilton is helping us to understand that that is the intention of the framers, that the court would in fact have this power. And he explains it thusly. He says, a constitution is and must be regarded as a fundamental law. If there should happen to be an irreconcilable variance between the two, meaning a federal law and the constitution, the constitution ought to be preferred to the statute or the law. In plain English, he's saying that if the constitution says one thing and Congress says something else, well, the Constitution is superior to Congress, so the congressional law will be struck down. So really, according to Hamilton, the job of the judicial branch is to protect the Constitution from Congress. Congress is the threat to the Constitution. Through their lawmaking power, Congress might at times encroach or make laws that go against the Constitution. So he describes courts as the bulwark of a limited Constitution against the legislative branch. And he says that as long as they have that permanent tenure of office, meaning that life tenure, they'll have the independent spirit, which we call an independent judiciary, which will be essential to them successfully guarding the Constitution and defending it from congressional overreach. So I want to hear what you think. Should federal judges have life terms or would it be better if they're democratically elected or maybe served a fixed term of office? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Until next time, this has been a La Money Production. Thanks again for watching this video. If you want to do me a favor, hit that like button before you go. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you check out the AP Gov Ultimate Review Pack. It is a great, great aid to getting prepared for the AP exam. And I'll see you all in the next video.